In today's show, we're talking Dynasty League, values of players, Dynasty League ADPs, and what we think of them. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Yesterday we did a show setting up a dynasty league and things to take uh, into account and pay attention to with links of where you can go to join dynasty league. So if you haven't uh, haven't seen that or haven't heard that, go and check Yesterday's show. Today, we're going to be looking at some Dynasty ADP data, looking at recent Dynasty drafts and mock drafts as to where players are going and uh, and what we think about it. And what and by we, you'll find out in a second who the guest is, and we'll bring him in just in a second. But today's episode is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. Enjoyment isn't the end game. It is the whole game, but only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. So let's get into it and talk about NBA Dynasty Fantasy Leagues. All right, so let's bring in today's guest now. He is the host of the Punt Intended podcast, new podcast, uh, Dynasty Basketball podcast. He is responsible for the uh, Dynasty content over at HoopBall. We are joined today by Rhett Bauer, first time, uh, first time guest on the show. Rhett, welcome. Thank you very much, Josh. Really glad to be here and uh, excited to talk about some Dynasty. Not often we get to do that on your show, so no, I like, listen to yesterday's. Yep, exactly. Excited. My show is uh, very much taken up with redraft stuff during the season. We tend to go into more Dynasty stuff in the offseason because that's sort of where a lot of the Dynasty stuff does take place in terms of rookie drafts and trades and all that sort of stuff. And we've got more time to sort of sit on this sort of sit on this information and, and see where, where it comes through. But uh, let's, let's talk. So what we're going to do is we had Brendan on yesterday from FBI and I've talked about Matt Lawson already from FBI, who does all these uh, dynasty rankings, but he also does dynasty ADP stuff from from drafts. Now, before we go, we're going to talk about dynasty ADPs here. These are from very limited sample sizes, so they can change pretty rapidly depending on when they do mocks. And what we're going to do, or I'm hopeful to do, is to, to push a few more Dynasty mocks and Dynasty rookie mocks through. So you'll see me retweeting a lot more of them so we can get more sample size in. But this is over a few Dynasty drafts that Matt and the FBI guys have done over the last a month or so, a couple of weeks, um, including the 2021 rookies These uh, this data uh, includes in terms of startup drafts. So it is pretty interesting when we have, have a look at that. And we're just going to have a look at some players who we think might be overvalued, undervalued, based on some of this ADP data that has come out at the moment. So let's, uh, let's talk about the first one of these guys now and I don't actually remember who the first one of these guys is that I've got oh yes oh that's the wrong one uh yeah it's uh we have issues with uh with uh my um my production just one sec while I just fix that up all right so after that little uh, embarrassing gaff let's go in to talk about the first guy we're going to talk about now for real this time and that is Jar Morant who has a dynasty ADP at the moment of 31.3 now Rhett obviously Jar Morant did not achieve the level of being the 31st best player in fantasy basketball this season. So what do you think of this ADP? It uh, it seems to me to be a little high on the surface. I think it definitely is a little high. And most importantly, the players you're taking around Ja Morant in that range are already fantasy studs while also having similar upside. Assists are a premium, we know that. But Ja is really only above average at points and assists. And I really can't justify taking him that high, even with the chance that he improves his shot and which would do numbers for uh, his threes and both his percentages just can't really justify 31 to me. The interesting thing that around that area, if I look at this, this table, like Evan Mobley is going a spot ahead of him, which is pretty interesting. Um, Paul George is actually going at 31 as well. So, you know, would you rather Paul George or Jar Morant? I know Paul George is obviously a lot older, but do you get three more years of guaranteed production that's higher than 31? Maybe um, we look at you know, someone like a Ben Simmons is around that area. We've got you know, Anthony Edwards is around that zone as well in that 31 range. But you know, Jar didn't finish in the top 100 this year. So it's a, it's a long way back. And you're right, steals, the percentages, all that sort of stuff needs to come together. Where would you feel more comfortable taking him? I think I'd be okay in the 50s, but I'm not sure. Where, where do you sit with him? That's That's got to be the range just because he is 
such a great real life player and he is so young and provides those elite assists that we know are hard to get. So I, it would be very hard for me to let him slide as your fourth or fifth best player, but I just really struggled taking him as my second or third best player, depending on the size of the league, of course. Yeah, you're expecting some big, big steps forward if he's going to be repaying that in the next two years. And he might, like he might do it next year. I highly doubt that. And in a redraft, and never take him at that level next year. Um, but it is it is pretty aggressive to get him at that spot. Next guy we're going to talk about is Joel Embiid, who has a dynasty ADP of 7.5. Now, jo- Joel is what, just turned 27? So he's not particularly old. But this year, Embiid, on a per-game basis, if I can bring up my, my sheet in front of me, was he even as good as that? Like I, I do not understand. Like If you are hesitant to take Joel Embiid in the first round in a redraft league, like he was fifth on a per-game basis this year. With the injuries, with the fact that he's going to miss time, with the fact that he's almost... Like he's three years away from 30, and... To me, if he when he turns 30, he's an older 30 because of the injury risk. There's no way I'm investing the seventh pick in Joel Embiid in Dynasty. I just, I just don't see why. I know he's great. Per game is great, but he's never going to hit that as a total value. No, absolutely not. And I'm really glad you brought him up when we were going back and forth because when I did my Dynasty rankings that just posted on HoopBall, I had Joel Embiid outside the top 12 because yeah, of that. Fair he's, enough. he's got that knee history like we know he's got injury history you know that he's not going to play a full season so not only are you signing up for a guy that has more injury risk than almost anybody else inside the top 10 of uh of this adp he's already 27 and i just i just can't justify that at all before we get on to the next guy, I'm going to tell you that Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. We're getting ready here for Game Two of the NBA Finals uh, today. By the time this podcast goes to air, and you can check out that all baseball action over at Bet Online. Get all that latest news, odds, and info for all of your sporting needs. And before that next tip, before the next pitch, head over to Bet Online on your laptop or mobile device and check out all of the great sporting news, sign-up bonuses, and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore, as this is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their runs to the playoffs. Head to the website or use your mobile device and use the promo code Locked On to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online are your online sportsbook experts. Yeah, the Embiid ones, it is a tough one, but you're right. I wouldn't have him in the top 12 either. And I think you just sit, he's not like 23 and he's had a couple of, um, yeah, a couple of bad injuries. He's 27. So, yeah, by the time he hits 30, 30 and we're going to talk about some guys who are in that 30, 31 range anyway, and their value is already in the toilet in terms of Dynasty ADP. So it is a very interesting one. The next guy we take a look at is a guy that you put down a couple of Jalen's in your list of guys you wanted to talk about. So let's go with Jalen Green, but Jalen Suggs is equally applicable here because they've got ADPs at 42 and 43 for Green and Suggs respectively in a startup Dynasty draft. Um, You want to talk about the green or the Jalen's green and Suggs. So you know, what do you make of this you know, ADP you know, top 50 ADP already for these guys? It falls along the same lines as Ja a little bit. Obviously we don't know what Suggs or green are going to be in the NBA. We don't even know what team they're going to play on at the moment. So it's tough for me to put them inside the top 40 or like right around that range for an ADP because we just don't know where they're going to be. And with the guys that are surrounding them, like, I understand that Lonzo Ball is three or four years older than Jalen Suggs or Jalen Green, but I would much rather have Lonzo. Like, there's no question in my mind. We know what Lonzo is. He's a known quantity with a top 50 season under his belt now with the improvements he's made. And I just, it's just really tough for me to take something completely unknown, even if they blow up. And this is the only chance you have to get them. Just can't do it inside the top 40 for me. You got John Collins' ADP is 40. Miles Turner's 45. Um, uh, well, no, I'm not going to talk about him, so we'll talk about him later. Yeah, you're right. Lonzo at 41. Um, Jalen Suggs, to me, his fantasy rookie translations come across all right at this point. Again, we don't know team or anything like that, but his actual raw numbers come across all right. Greens don't come across quite as well. They're still pretty strong. But they don't come across quite as well as Suggs. But you know, if you, we're expecting, based on these ADPs, that Cunningham... 
which we're not going to talk about Cade on, on this show, but I'll tell you where his ADP is. It's at 13, which I actually think is fair enough. And yeah, Mobley's at 30, and then you've got these two guys at 42, 43. One of these top four guys, almost historically, is, is this not going to work out? Like, it just doesn't happen that all, every player who's taken high works out into a really good NBA player. So someone's going to going to bust, and you're, you're wasting a pick perhaps there that might be, like, if it's a 20-man league, this might be your second pick. Or your third pick, whatever it is, that's that's a real risk to, to take that sort of guy there. And I know that Green might be awesome, and he might be a top thirty guy in two years. He also might not be. And there's a huge amount of unknowns there. And in general, okay, okay, let's let's just quickly divert there. How do you feel about Cunningham at thirteen? Then, like, because generally people who are analysing fantasy tend to be a little bit risk averse on on rookies in general. But would you be happy to take Cade at 13 and say to contrast him with Embiid? If they were both there at 13 or 12, would you take Cade or Joel? I would absolutely take Cade, but I'm also very injury adverse when it comes to my best player in a draft or my second best player, depending on the size of the league. But I think when it comes to drafting Cade that early or drafting Embiid that early, that just drastically changes what your timeline is going to be. And so if I take Embiid with my first pick, I need to win like right now because there's no way I want to try and rebuild or, or have a team that might try to win in three years when Embiid is 30. Like I want to win now versus taking Cade. You can deal with some of those growing pains if there are any. And at that point I might be more excited to take Mobley at 30, Ja at 31 and then Suggs and Green at 40, 42, because you can afford to be a little bit patient. So that timeline matters a lot, but Cade over Embiid would be very easy for me if they're both there at 12. I'm sure you have some of these same sort of problems, but it's why I generally don't do dynasty rankings is because, you know, to me, a ranking list can be really tough anyway and can be really misleading because it's about how things fit. And in dynasty, you're adding an extra dimension on top of that in terms of age and contendability. So for one team, Embiid might be worth the 11th pick and for another, he might be worth the 40th pick. And the same goes for a guy like Green and Suggs. If your team is built on Embiid, Paul George, LeBron, they're your first three guys, then you're not taking Green at 40, you're taking him at 80 or whatever, or 70, and you're seeing what happens from there. So that's why I do. people always ask me, Josh, drop dynasty rankings. I don't, because there's, to me, there's just too many complexities in there that I feel like I again, you, you've got your dynasty rankings and other people do. I just don't want to put, until I've got to figure out a way to be able to do it properly, or in the way in my, my mind, I just find it too confusing to be able to get that. And I'm sure you deal with those problems all the time. It does get very interesting because you'll go through the list and you'll see, obviously, Jimmy Butler is better than McCall Bridges, but in a dynasty format, Jimmy's 32 with however many miles on his legs and McCall is 24 turning 25. It's just really tough to try and balance those two. And so that's why the rankings are a guideline. We just talked about it the other day on pun intended. It's a guideline and we're here to answer questions about who would actually be more valuable for your team. But at a certain point, it just takes knowing the direction of your team to decide what a good pick actually is. Absolutely. Next guy we're going to talk about is Ben Simmons. We referenced him earlier. He has an ADP of 34. The anti-Simmons sentiment at the moment is pretty high, Rhett. Um, he was pretty rough this season. But again, we know that he's a bad free throw shooter. We're all well aware of that. And if you put the old punt free throw filter onto fantasy rankings for this season, Ben Simmons was the 31st best player. Uh, he is 25 years of age. I don't know if I, he's averaging 14, 7, and 7. Do I look at his numbers and go, oh, well, he's, he's only getting worse from here. Like, does, is anyone sitting there and, and thinking? Yeah, to, to me, while we have that anti-Simmons sentiment and there are struggles there, I just think that if you are looking to acquire him in dynasty formats, the fact that he's at 34 feels... It feels too low to me because I can easily see things changing and him improving. And even if he doesn't improve from what was his worst season, he still probably is better than that than that zone. And he is only 25. Maybe you disagree with me on that, but I just think that's a little bit too low for a guy that we sort of know what he's doing. No, I absolutely do not disagree. Because if you take Ben Simmons, you're almost guaranteed to be punting free yeah, throw. have to. And so there, there's no... And you're probably lumping threes in there too at a certain extent. So if you take Giannis in the first round at four where he's going in most dynasty drafts. I just did that recently. And I took Simmons on the way back around at 20 and I felt good about it because when you have to factor in that punt, it, yes, Simmons for nine cat might be okay at 34, but if you're punting that three, punting that free throw, which you know, you are with guys like Giannis and Zion, 
you've got to get a Ben Simmons because he's just such a good player, even if he does continue doing what was his worst season last year, which I don't think is the case once he gets out of a pretty poorly fitting situation in Philly that I think we can acknowledge that. It's, a, it's another reason why just straight lists without context are really hard to interpret because, you know, you know, Simmons, he was 60th this year. It doesn't actually mean anything because if you have him, you are losing free throws anyway. So you don't care that that's dragging him all the way down. And it is super, yeah. super important to understand that context. It's not important. It's not as important for every player, but for some like Simmons and, and Giannis is one of those and Doncic can be one of those. Um, Bears, yeah, there's plenty of these guys. Um, that you have to have that context attached to it to be able to fully understand where they sit. The next guy, you referenced him earlier, Mikael Bridges, who has an ADP of just just a smidge, just a bee stick under 60, 59.8 there for Bridges. Um, I, I, th I think you're going to tell me that that is too low for Bridges, and I will 100% agree with you. It is too low. I think that Bridges is probably closer to 40 than 60 in my eyes. And, and it's easy to say that, but when you start looking at the names, it makes sense why he's been slipping in drafts because he's a three and D wing that doesn't do anything exceptionally well. He's just solid all the way across the board, but I'll tell you, we talked about it on pun intended, not that long ago. McCall Bridges in his first two years in the league was playing 29 minutes a game and getting 1.4 steals a game this year. He got 1.0 steals. There is some upside with McCall Bridges defensively that could drastically change his impact on your team. And if you get him at 60, I think that's a steal. Yeah, and the other thing he does, he blocks shots. He's hyper-efficient, but and it's not going to really happen on this team at the moment. But as he starts to develop a little bit more, he's not a bad passer, and he can handle a little bit more higher usage. But I will throw this out to you, Rhett, and I'm sure you're well aware of this. But he's the same age as Ben Simmons. Like, he's not super young. Like, he's just about to turn 25. So while we look, he's older than Devin Booker. Um, so while we look at Bridges as a guy that's sort of just coming on now and really establishing himself now, he's not that young. So maybe that's, I guess, some of the factor of him dropping down that list a little bit. I still would take him above that because I think he's probably got four, four to five top 45 seasons in him from here on, but he's not 22. Like he, he is 25. He is approaching peak. He is that same age as Ben Simmons, same age as Miles Turner, which again, if you ask the general person who's not as plugged in on this, they would not assume that those guys are all the same age. Yeah, the age may have a part to play, but I think because it's his third year in the league at 25, that's just another piece of context like you talked about that matters. And I, even with him being 25, you know you're getting five plus years of great production from him because he plays the most position, most important position in the league and is an elite defender that's always going to be on the floor when the games matter. And that's when minutes played and opportunity is one of the things that I think people really underestimate when it comes to dynasty basketball, for sure. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, we can be great per minute players, but if you're not good enough to actually get those minutes up, that doesn't actually mean anything. And uh, Bridges is going to get those big minutes, uh, you would think, for quite a while to go. Now, I'm going to tell you guys about Built Bar because Built Bar, not only is it the best tasting protein bar ever, they've got a new flavor. It is called Grasshopper Cookie. What does it taste like? Well, this is like Built Bar's version of the classic thin mint cookie, all the flavor without all of that sugar, 150 calories, 17 grams of protein and only five grams of sugar. But they've got other delicious flavors, coconut, raspberry, salted caramel, orange. If you haven't tried those flavors or you don't know what your favorite flavor is, just get a mixed box and that will send you 18 bars, all nine flavors, two of each flavor so you get to try your favorite one. Check out the macro, 17 to 18 grams of protein. The calories range from 130 to 180 in the bars and only four to five grams of sugar and four to five grams of net carbs. Go to builtbar.com. Actually, you know what? Built Bar, it's the official protein of the U.S. track and field team. That's pretty cool. Go to built.com. They've changed the website. Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your order. The promo code is LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, for 15% off at built.com. Okay, next guy on our list, Kawhi Leonard. We talk about 3 and D wings, which is what Kawhi started out as, and now he's basically just an offensive juggernaut, and the defense has dropped off, even though he still gets, you know, I guess, legacy all uh, all defensive team votes. His dynasty ADP is at 26, and yeah, he's just turned 30. Much like Joel Embiid, we have the consistent injury issues with Kawhi. Now, Kawhi, on a per-game basis, again, this season, was... He was really good. What was he, the 10th ranked player this year on a per-game basis? Yeah, that's really good. But he played 52 games. He's 30 years of age. He's got a mysterious ACL injury that we have no idea what it is. I don't think that I would even take Kawhi at 26. 
How do you view that? No, I wouldn't. And some people are going to push back saying that Kawhi was sixth in totals this year, which is really impressive for a guy that we know missed a bunch of games and will continue to miss a bunch of games. But he's you we don't know the extent of his injury, like you said, but he's also got a degenerative knee injury as well. So, again, this is just one of those things where he's going to be if you draft him, he's probably going to be your best per game player. But you're taking Kawhi in a dynasty league. I just, he's going to be your second or third draft pick. And that's really tough signing up for those missed games, unless you want to go for the glass cannon approach and pair Embiid, Kawhi, and then Kyrie together all, all in one draft and hope that the stars align. Yeah, I used to have that theory is like, oh, I've got these you know, guys. Well, if it all works out, then it works out together. But to me, and this is a fair few years ago, I had this idea, but now to me that if I've got one of those guys, I'm avoiding the other ones because the likelihood of Kawhi playing say 75 games, let's say it's 2%, right? The likelihood of Embiid playing 75 games is 2%. And you add those together and that becomes you know a lot smaller to get them both to play 75 games together. It's almost impossible to do that. It's impossible to get one of them to do it. It's impossible to get you're more impossible for two. And it's even, even more impossible to get three of them to do it at once. So while that might be, hey, if all the stars align, well, you're talking about like a one in a million chance of that happening versus say one in a hundred of one of them doing it with some other solid guys around them. And I think that I've you know, sort of eased off of that. And if I get one of those guys and I'm avoiding those other players and especially avoiding players who come into a season with injury because of that. So I do think it is too high, even though he will for next year, he'll beat that number. Like, he'll, pretty confident he'll beat that number next year. But, He's 31 after that uh, with degenerative knee and uh, quad tendon issues. I'm not all that confident in where that goes from there. Keldon Johnson, interesting player. I did a redraft of the 2019 draft two days ago. And some people were like, man, why have you got Keldon so low? And I think I had him, he, he was picked at 29. And I had him at 17 in that draft. Man, he's so low. Um, he started off the season really well and then completely faded. His ADP is 95 and... Part of the problem I had with him coming into the draft was that I don't know what he's doing that's good. Like he doesn't pro provide defensive stats. He's a three and D guy who doesn't actually hit threes at a high rate. Like I'm not sure what he does. And this year, like again, like he started off well, but he didn't finish well. Like the, it was pretty rough for big chunks of this season, Keldon Johnson. So this dynasty ADP of 95, you're expecting some big steps forward. And uh, I'm guessing you don't agree with that. No, definitely not. It he did start off extremely hot. I actually drafted him going into this year in our rookie draft. He was unclaimed. And so I picked him up and his start was off some ridiculously hot shooting. And I think it was 1.4 steals a game and one block a game. Yep. Sounds about right. In, in some just highly inflated minutes. And so obviously those, fantasy outputs are just not going to hold. He's not going to be a 50% shooter, 52% shooter from the field. He's not going to shoot 80% from the free throw line. And he's not going to get 1.4 steals and one block. It's just taking him inside the top 100 is really hoping that that hot stretch to start the year was real. And I don't see any way that it is. I have him further down closer to 130 than, than anything inside the top 100. He's only 21. And he did only play 29 minutes a game this season because he played 29 minutes a game because his play fell off to the large degree that it did. But you know, he was the 197th ranked player this season. That's not remotely good. Like, that is a long way off for a starter who did start off and was putting up like consistent top 70 numbers for, say, a month. Um, and it fell off. He averaged 0.6 steals. He averaged under a three and shot 33% from three, which is not a great number. There was just not... No, he will improve. I got no doubt he's going to improve, but when and will he ever have a season where he is better than 95th as an overall, as a you know, per game or even total rank? I I would say that that's maybe a 50-50 proposition that he has one season better than that. I agree. And your point about what he's good at is a great one because when you look at his stats this last year, and even if you wanted to project it out to per 36, which is a bad idea because he's not going to play 36 minutes a game, but even then, he's really only above average in rebounds, and that's it. So I just – unless he becomes more of a stocks machine or somehow hits more threes while keeping the field goal percentage up, I would agree. I, th I 
would say it's very unlikely that he meets that 95 ADP even for one season over the next five years, let alone being drafted there as if it's going to be a routine thing. The next guy I want to talk about is uh, the Jedi, Ojin Nobi. But what about Scarf? OG. Stop works. OG. Uh, you better stop OG. Yes, OG Ananobi. His dynasty ADP at the moment sits at 41. He was the 48th ranked player this season. He is 24. He's a year younger than Bridges. Um, and we saw down the stretch where they, the Raptors just said, all right, um, OG, we actually want you to become a part of this offense, a big part of this offense. And he's in, all right, let's go. Usage went up. Efficiency stayed the same. I legitimately think that he can have at least one top 20 season. I think he can be an absolute top 30, top 35 staple. Um, he's two, three years away from his peak. I think he could be an absolute monster for the next five years. And 41 to me feels like you got him at 41, Jalen Green, Jalen Suggs at 42, 43. Oh, man, give me OG because I'm going to get top 30 numbers, I reckon, for the next three years because I think we're going to see OG push. He averaged 16 points a game this year. If he averaged 20 a game next year, I would not be stunned in the slightest. Maybe, maybe that's too high. But he's going to up what he does. His usage is going to go up, and we're going to see more from OG, I reckon. I absolutely agree, and it's hilarious to me to see OG sandwiched between Jalen Green and Jalen Suggs because that should be absolutely no competition, even with the four or five extra years for OG. He's just gotten so much better every year in the league, and his fantasy output has gotten so much better. He was 36 this year, and it was on the back of, I think, 1.7 steals a game or something like that. So... And we know that the Raptors players play a lot of minutes. Was that, was that, he played 33 minutes and 1.5 steals. Like, they're not outrageous. It's not like he's no, getting 2.4 steals or you know, playing yeah. 38 minutes. Like, that's not impossible. No, definitely not. And I, I agree completely that the Raptors should start giving him more opportunity and more responsibility within that offense because he showed he could do it. Yeah, and I, I, I think absolutely when they said, all right, we don't want to go to the bubble – Let's really start um, yeah, focusing on what we do for the future. Kyle, you can sit down. He probably won't be back. Um, OG, show us what you can do. And he did it. And he did it really well. And I'm really excited to see where where he goes. Maybe I'm wrong on this, but I just think that is some really, really strong value at number 40, number 41 for OG Ananobi, the next guy. Uh, all right, so I'm going to let you take the floor here because I constantly get shit about this guy, like about how yeah, you hate him. You don't know what you're talking about. Let's talk about Kevin Porter Jr.'s Dynasty ADP at number 86. Was there a more beloved player in fantasy this year who actually didn't deliver what people um, claimed that he was delivering at the time than Kevin Porter? I said I wasn't going to say stuff, but I'm still going to get in trouble. Um, all right, so tell me about Kevin Porter Jr., who was the 127th ranked player on a per-game basis this year despite playing 32 minutes a night and having a 26 usage in Houston. People are expecting him to be much better than what he was this year. And he has just turned 21. So he is very young. And I think there are improvements there, but people are really banking a lot on this bloke. I just can't, I can't get on board with Kevin Porter Jr. It's so volume driven on a bad, a yeah. really, really bad Houston Rockets team last year. And if you think that he's going to have the same usage as guys like Kawhi, Anthony Davis, Brandon Ingram, like along those lists, like you look at the names that he's surrounded by when it comes to the usage. Dylan Brooks. Actually, well, yeah, <laughs> we know. Uh, but we just, there's no way Kevin Porter Jr. stays doing that much. And even if he does, he just wasn't that good for fantasy. You'd have to be in a very specific build or just really think he's going to get a whole lot better to be taking him at 86. I personally have him closer to 120, which is why I'll probably never roster him. But you know what? I'm kind of okay with that. Now, this is going to sound weird to people who do listen to me talk about Kevin Porter. I actually don't mind taking him there. I think he's consistently overrated. He gets no steals, no blocks. He has poor field goals, poor free throws. Um, he scores all right. He gets a good assist. And I agree with you about the, about the usage. And he's not a player that I think should be considered a foundational piece that the Rockets go, oh, we've got Kevin Porter now. Let's just build around him. That's not how he works. But I actually no. don't, I don't hate it at 86. I'd probably push it more to 100, maybe around that area. And and I think that, yeah, he could probably have three top 100 seasons. Can he have ever have a top 50 year? Probably not. But I don't mind that around that 90, 100 zone. But I do understand your pushback on it because again, he is completely overrated. And even when he was overrated this year, uh, he didn't, really even approach anywhere near that number 
so that, that that is an interesting one, but people have a real because I don't know if you know Red. He scored fifty in a game, mate. Not many people do that, so people love him and think he's going to be awesome. Unless uh, you know, fifty point games that's, is, is that's a category all that we you care have. about. You know. Yep, him and uh, Corey Brewer are going to be number one and two draft picks for me next year for sure. Yep, uh, you can't do better. Let's go to the next guy, which is the last guy we're going to talk about today, and that is the one that I really wanted to talk about. So I don't know why I left him to the end. Darius Garland has an ADP of fifty six. Rhett, this is insane. What are we doing? Why is he at 56? Saving the best for last for sure here. I have no idea why he's 56. I went through our rankings and I think I had him 51st and that just felt way low for how good of a player he is, how much of the ball he's going to be taking from Sexton if they're even on the same roster next year. And his fantasy profile is just really, really good. Contributes everywhere, upped his steals so so much from last year to this year up to 1.4 i believe and i'm trying to buy all of the garland stock i can but i keep telling on myself in my articles about how good he's gonna be so i I haven't been able to acquire any yet last 13 games of the year played 33 minutes he averaged 20 and 7 with 1.4 steals on 46 and 86 so it's not on like you have 46 percent three-point shooting hit 38 percent there which is actually down on his season numbers he was just 52% from two. There is plenty of scope for him to be a 54% two-point guy, a 40% three-point guy, a 22-8 and eight player with 1.6 steals. And maybe that, if the 20 points or 22 points goes up, then the steals do drop, and that's what happens. To me, yeah, get, at 56, it's insanity to me. I, I think that in a redraft, I reckon he's probably 56 next year. And he's just, he's 21. Like, he's not, he's not old at all. And I think... I don't know what it is. Is it because he struggled as a rookie for you know ov- obvious reasons? Um, is it because of the Sexton issue? Is it because they think people are going to be that ca- the Cavs will take Suggs or Green if if he falls there? I, I just yeah, to me fifty six, he could he'll bring that value I reckon almost back next year, and then we just keep going forward and forward from there. He's twenty one. Like we got seven years I reckon of him probably beating that number in a row here. I just I don't get it. It's probably because more of the people ahead of him versus Garland himself, just because if you look at it, you know, it's, it's Jamal Murray, it's Jonathan Isaac, Tyrus Halliburton, Murray, Tyrus Halliburton's Tyrus 40, 46. Yeah. I, I would have, I would have Garland over Halliburton. They're the same age. I'd have Garland over yeah. him. Yeah. Just the, the elite assist that Garland's going to be able to bring, even though Halliburton did have a great season, just being efficient from everywhere while still getting five assists and 1.3 steals, something like that. But yeah, I, I love Darius Garland as a fantasy player, 21 and a half. You're absolutely right that he'll finish around top 50, if not better than that this year. Because I think it might be that he gets over, underrated because Sexton gets overrated yep. as a player and as a fantasy prospect. But Garland should have the ball. He's going to be the engine that drives that offense. And and I would love to have him moving forward at 56. I'm just going to have a look at something quickly on this uh, ADP list. Yeah, okay. So DeJounte Murray is three years, three and a half years older than Darius Garland, and he's getting picked six spots higher. Do you think that's – who would you take there, Murray or Garland? Oh, that's tough. DeJounte is my guy. I love DeJounte Murray as a fantasy player, and I think he's primed for a big year. But the four-year difference makes – Makes all of it. And it, it build kind of factors in here too, because if you're punting threes or free throws, yep. then that changes the math a little bit. But oh, he's, he's overall, 70, 79 free throws, Murray, last year. So we're not, we're, yeah. we're more looking at, um, yeah, the, the threes is the big one for The him. threes. Yep. So I would, if it was a startup, I would probably take Garland depending on the rest of the rest of my team. But that's a really good point. Yeah. It's, crazy where Garland goes. Yeah, to look, and people will look at it and go, well, he only finished, what, 80th or something this season. But again, just just have a look at how progressive the season went on and your second year as a point guard. Point guards don't really start to take off until yeah, maybe year three. I'm really convinced that he'll beat that number just next year. And I think there's some real value in him. So I did want to save him till the end. Rhett, that'll do it for us today as we've covered all of these guys. I believe that, yeah, that's everyone that we wanted to cover here. Um, yeah. How did you uh, how'd you find your first appearance here on the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast, talking some Dynasty, getting your stuff out there? Loved it. Love talking Dynasty all the time. I get a ton of questions through whatever means people can find me. I think I got a carrier pigeon last week. So I live for Dynasty. I love it. Send me everything you got, and I'll be sure to get back with you. So if people are going to send stuff to you, Rhett, well, now's the time to tell them where they do it. Where do they find you on Twitter? Where can they contact you? What's happening on Punt Intended at the moment? Yeah, so on Twitter, you can find me at Rhett underscore Bauer, R-H-E-T-T underscore B-A-U-E-R. 
And uh, on pun intended, we've done a couple podcasts about players that ended the season too hot, too cold, and then we'll do one on just right coming up. We did uh, a lottery review, seeing what kind of impact that would have on Dynasty. And then we just recently did one on punting and team building. Uh, and then we're going to get into what value rookie picks have um, for this year and, and potentially moving forward as well. So be on the lookout for all that. Yeah, so go and check out Rhett over there on Twitter and on the Punt Intended podcast, which you can find wherever you find podcasts, which you guys know where that is. Rhett, thank you again for coming on, discussing some value of these uh, 10 guys that we discussed today. Uh, much appreciated. Yep, thanks for having me on, Josh. Loved it. All right, and that will do it for today's show. We thank Red again for coming on. Don't forget to follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. Well, on YouTube, hit the thumbs up. Give it a comment, like, subscribe, all of that stuff that really helps the show out. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya. See ya.